Hello, ag grads. Thanks so much for uh, joining us for another of ag grad live, another career spotlight. Uh, I understand that I have a little bit of feedback on the microphone, uh, and I'm not sure where that's coming from. Uh, if it's, um, if it's uh, just something with my soundboard, so I apologize for that. But luckily, I am not the important one here today. Uh, we have a guest with us. We have Carmen Fenton, who is the communications director at the Texas Cattle Feeder Association, to talk about her career in, in the beef industry. So uh, let me go ahead and bring Carmen on. Carmen, welcome to the show here. Hi, thanks for having me. All right, you're, you're going to have to talk a lot because of the uh, problems I'm having with my audio. So I, I hope that's okay. And you're, in your position, I imagine you do a lot of. Lots of talking, lots of talking. But t- tell us more about that position. So communication director, what exactly does that mean? For cattle feeders. Association? Well, basically my job here at TCFA um, is to kind of manage the reputation of uh, not only just the association, but kind of the fed beef industry. Um, there, there's collectively, um, here in Texas and the surrounding states, we've got about 6 million fed cattle annually. Uh, that's about 30% of the U S, uh, fed beef inventory. So it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of, um, of cattle right here on feed. And my job is to make sure that the press, the public consumers, um, kind of understand exactly what it is that we do on a feed yard um, and why it's so important to our, our um, basically to our, our food supply here in the United States and abroad. Um, and I get to do that every day and it's, it's awesome. So. And I know you have, you have a long history in the cattle industry, but uh, this job is, is a relatively new position for you. Tell us about the journey that's led to this position. Sure. I grew up in a really small town in the Texas Panhandle called White Deer. Um, my family operates a small cow-calf operation. It used, my, goes all the way back, I guess, to my great-grandparents. Um, they kind of settled up here, um, ran cows, and, and now to this day, my brother and my dad and I, um, we partner in our own um, s- small operation, nothing huge. Um, but I was kind of raised in that industry. And um, went to Texas Tech, was an AgCom grade or AgCom major. Um, they have a great internship program through their ag college. And um, I got to go be a DC intern um, for Congress in Washington my senior year at Tech. And I went up there, did all the grunt work, was a typical intern, and ended up loving it. And I, I stayed for about five years. Um, worked for two different members of Congress, and by the time I left, I was the communications director for a member of Congress from the Austin area named um, Judge Carter, John Carter, who's actually still a member. Um, And then I left there and went and worked for the Texas and Southwestern Cattle Raisers Association, which is kind of the cow-calf aspect of the beef industry. Um, Was there in their Austin office for about six years, Um, had a few kids, decided I was going to come home to the Panhandle, uh, moved back to Amarillo. My husband is an attorney here in town, and um, we uh, kind of settled in, and eventually I made my way to the TCFA, where I'm at now, and it's kind of my, growing up, I kind of always wanted to work here. It was, it's kind of the, for me, it's um, it's been kind of the dream job uh, to land as a communications director at the Cattle Feeders Association, which if you're from this area, it's kind of an, an iconic association um, locally. I mean, it's, we, we definitely do a lot statewide and throughout our three state region. But if you drive down I 40 in Amarillo, you see the TCFA building, especially during Christmas. We've got, you know, Santa up there with his sleigh being pulled by cows. I mean, it's just a place that you always went. So uh, I, I came here in March and um, been here for almost a year. So, well, I guess a few months shy of a year, I'm trying to do the math in my head. But, uh, and I'm so glad to be here. And working for these awesome members who, you know, take great pride in producing a sustainable product that people enjoy, um, which is beef. So, anyway. Yeah, I, I started my career in Amarillo, and I can remember the building very well, exactly where you were. Uh, <laughs> now, your your members then, those are these are cattle feed lots or cattle feeders, so it's uh, mainly people who own feed yards, is that right? Um, yes, a lot of our membership are their feed yard managers, feed yard owners, and also um, what we call feeders, which are folks that uh, feed their cattle in a feed yard. So they may not necessarily own a feed yard, 
Um, we also, we have, the, that's the majority of our membership. We, we do have a, um, some allied industry folks, some uh, business folks that may have an interest in the cattle, uh, cattle business or beef in, business that are uh, what we call industry associate members. Um, but mostly it is w w physical producers, folks that are working every day um, to produce beef. Uh, and um, that's, it's, uh, I think our head, I think I mentioned this already, but it's about 6 million um, head of cattle that we kind of oversee as the associate, or that we serve, I guess is a better way to put that, um, as the association. So, yeah, and they are, they are the, the backbone of the beef industry, I tell you. I mean, these guys are what, what consistently provide us with um, a safe and affordable and healthy food supply. It's pretty awesome to actually get to work with them every day. Um, it's quite honorable what they do, I guess. Yeah. In your position at communications director, I think there's probably a lot of young people who, who would love to someday be in that role. What what can you point to in your background that really set you up to, to get that job and to be successful in that role? Well, my dream, um, I had two dreams as a kid. I wanted to either be a meteorologist or <laughs> I wanted to be a communications director um, in agriculture. So I feel like both of those professions would have eventually brought me to Amarillo, which is like weather Mecca. And it's also a uh, cattle feeding Mecca. So, um, you know, definitely being raised in the ag industry, the, specifically the beef industry, I think probably contributed to that. Um, but really, I tell you, it was that that time in Washington um, as a press secretary, communications director, that I really kind of figured out that this is what I was going to do for the rest of my life. It's what I enjoyed doing. I loved, um, you know, taking an issue and learning about it enough where I could communicate it properly and in a way that normal people can understand. Um, and so, I mean, I, I think that's kind of what set me up. And, and, you know, I had a lot, I feel like I was very blessed to have that opportunity going to DC because I was really young. I mean, I was uh, my 25 I think when I, when I ended up leaving, so I was, I was pretty young and, uh, career wise and just to be kind of tossed in the deep end of the pool, um, with some heavy hitters in the communications field, I just learned so much. I mean, I, I learned how to put my head down and work really, really hard and absorb everything I could. And I, I really think that experience helped me, um, get to where I am now. Now, that's not to say you have to go to Washington, D.C. To, to be a communications director, um, but for an association uh, who does a lot of legislative work, who works with the different agencies, I, I really feel like it has helped me um, tremendously be able to communicate to our membership and to the public and deal with the press when it comes to rules and regulations and laws Um about the way food is, or specifically beef, is made here in the United States. And I don't know if I would be able to do to do that had I not had that experience. Mm -hmm. So that is, I, I really think that's kind of what set me up. So it, it sounds like the nature of the job is is diving into these issues, and what's important, and kind of crafting the message about what's important from the issues. Uh, what's an example of an issue you've worked on since since PFA? Being at TCFA, well, we are we are constantly working on issues. Um, and I will say, um, one of the big things that's happening now, if, if you read the news, you are aware, is um, NAFTA renegotiation. I mean, that's a huge. We have a huge stake in the outcome of that. Uh, being cattle feeders, we we do a lot of trading. Um, I think Mexico is the number one trading partner for Texas, so we have a we have a very high interest in exactly how that plays out. Uh, and we're watching it carefully. And um, so as a communicator for an association who has a stake in a legislative issue like NAFTA, it's very important to kind of rally our members um, to, to make them understand that what is happening in Washington is if it will eventually affect them directly, affect their business directly, um, so that they are um, more, what's the word, so they're more eager maybe to get involved. Um, any, any association, I think our power is kind of in numbers. Uh, you know, if we, if we all were out there feeding cows, owning, or not cows, that's cow-calf operator here, but feeding cattle um, on our own and, and kind of 
calling our congressmen and our messages aren't consistent and they're not uh, united, our, our, um, our, our drum beat isn't quite as loud. So part of my job is to kind of rally everyone, get the message out there, say, hey, make sure you're calling your congressmen. And this is why. Tell them this is why. Specifically, if you live, uh, you know, if you're the constituent of the person you're calling, you know, this is going to affect their district. It's going to have an economic impact. It's going to change the beef industry in Texas, you know, if uh, if things go awry or if they don't, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So that that's kind of that's part of what I do um, from this office here. So and it's a. Uh, it's fast and furious and it's never boring and it can be frustrating at times. Um, when you're dealing with, with the government, it can also be very rewarding. So, uh, yeah. and it's really awesome to see a group of people who are so passionate about what they do. Like, like our members, uh, they, they care so much because they care about the product that they produce and they mm -hmm. want to do the best that they can for the consumer. Uh, so they get, you know, when it's time to, to call the troops. I mean, they're ready. They go. So, um, you mentioned the, fr the frustrating part of dealing with some bureaucracy. What, what, is, what would you say is the hardest part of the job? Oh, I mean, there's so many different aspects of my job and definitely like communicating legislative regulatory stuff is part of that. Um, I definitely, you know, I, I think the, the biggest, the biggest, um, challenge for me and other communicators in agriculture, specifically um, the beef and pork and chicken industries, is is getting through to consumers and making them feel super confident in the choices that they make at the grocery store. I mean, so, you know, at the end of the day, yes, uh, I work for the cattle feeders. And yes, the feed yards are a very specific um, entity. And they're different than a cow-calf operator. And we're different, you know, than a packer. But at, at the end of the day, we're all trying to promote the same product, which is beef. And uh, um, the challenge is kind of getting the truth out there, or, or maybe not, not quite the truth, but you, you see all this, these false claims about, um, you know, what's in the food, what, how, it, how it's made, how it's processed. And I think the challenge, and it's more of a recent challenge, honestly, is people believe, consumers believe uh, what they read. Mm -hmm. whether it's true or not. And um, they, they don't necessarily pick up the Amarillo Globe News. That's not where they're always getting their news. Um, they are reading uh, this blog or they're looking on their Facebook or Twitter feeds for just nuggets. And they, they assume that what they read is correct. And um, 50, more than 50% of the time, it's, it's probably not. Mm -hmm. So we as an industry and really agriculture, the whole, um, just working to kind of overcome that. And, and uh, I think, you know, we've come a long way. Ag producers, farmers, and ranchers, they tend to be very independent, and they're very, you know, humble people by nature. Um, so we haven't always been one to go out and toot our own horn. And um, we're, we're, we're going to have to start doing that more and more. And we, we definitely are. I think we've come so far. Um, that will continue to be a challenge as the new cycle just continues to change. I mean, we're living in a time of mecca media. There's, I'm a, I'm a typical millennial. I get my news everywhere, but the paper, you know, and, um, so, I, don't, I don't get the paper either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're learning to, to kind of embrace, embrace that and, um, use it to our advantage, not necessarily look at it as something that, that is negative, you know? So that's, a, that, I think that's a challenge for all of us. It's not just, just me. Um, but definitely something the ag industry as a whole is, we'll have to overcome if we're going to be effective. So, right. Yeah. I, I was, here's just a little bit here. If you're tuning in live, I'm sorry about my audio. If you have a question, just, uh, type it in the comments we'll see it, and I can, uh, I can ask Carmen about it here before, uh, before our interview is up. Um, but shifting gear, as you see young people entering the beef industry or just young people entering the workforce in general, what are some uh, kind of do's and don'ts to share with them based on your career? Sure. Um, so being a communications manager I, or director, I actually just went through the process of hiring um, a number two, which I, I, I have not had, I've not done that before. And um, I learned a lot through that. It just, 
just interviewing different people. Um, first off, I just want to say to those folks that are coming out of college, you are incredibly talented. I mean, the things that you learn at Tech or a and or wherever you go are, are things I didn't necessarily learn. Um, you, you have kind of an edge on, on me because um, I've learned social media, you know, by trial and error. I, I, we were, we, graphic design and all that was kind of an afterthought. I mean, we learned more like how do you write a press release and how do you pitch um, a story and the do's and don'ts, like don't you ever buy a reporter lunch, you know? I mean, things like that that are, that are um, more what I would call traditional media. Um, you guys have, have what the need we we need you essentially to come help fill the void that that we've created um so you know be confident in that and understand that there is a a need for what you do and what you offer especially you ag calm guys out there um and but but i also want to just say that it is so important it is the most important thing i i think especially if you're going to go into communications to be able to look someone in the eye to talk to them, to carry on a conversation, to um, write a sentence that's grammatically correct. I mean, things that you just don't, uh, you don't put much, much stake in. They mean a lot to, um, to those of us who need you to be on your game all the time. And um, I would just say to make sure that you are willing to, you know, check your own work and present the best product and be present yourself in the best the best way possible um be confident in your abilities uh we like i said we're looking to hire folks who are who have um kind of what's the word um abilities that we don't and we want you but we also want you to be able to you know talk (laughs) except work for an association because most associations are are small um and everybody does everything. And part of that is having relationships with members as a communications person, you have to be able to form a relationship with a traditional media reporter because like it or not, I mean, the paper is still a big part of what we do. Radio is still a big part of what we do. Um, television, especially in Amarillo TV is still a big deal here. People watch the weather every single night. So we still have a lot. We still put a lot of emphasis on that. And, and, um, you know, all that stuff, doesn't just go by the wayside because there's this new rush of, of information. So, um, you know, be confident, be careful, check your work. Um, be careful what you post on social media. I can, I say that. I mean, I feel like that's a big thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I would hope by now there's been enough horror stories out there that people would do that. We have a really good question here from a, uh, a budding leader in the Texas, uh, cattle industry actually uh in jimmy abner so here let me see if we can get this pulled up just a minute here uh, and so uh jimmy's question is because i know the tca has a commercial steer contest for youth and high school students have you ever thought about doing a college contest maybe as a competition with more leaders in a pen just thought that might help recruit more students in the youth industry and further education as well as building a relationship network between future members of the industry. and You know, that is a great question and a great point. Um, we do here at TCA, TCFA, we have the Fed Beef Challenge and um, the Junior Fed Beef Challenge. There is there is a collegiate aspect of that. We, they do some judging and, and different things. Um, but, you know, I, I needed to actually talk to our membership department about that because that's a great idea to kind of have a, an entire – contest more directed at um the collegiate folks because we we have you know we have west texas a&m texas tech a&m i mean osu is just right down the street we have a lot of clarion college um a lot of folks that are interested in the ag industry kind of just right here locally um so that's a great idea i i know we have we have an aspect of that kind of built in we just i'm not quite sure how far we've taken it so that's definitely something we should consider yeah and actually he's so ross which i'll just get I, uh, I visited there last year, and it's probably the most underrated ag campus in the nation. It's beautiful down there. They've got a lot of interesting stuff going on. So, when did you- Sol Ross. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How did I leave them out? <laughs> All right. Well, Carmen, I really appreciate this. It's great to get someone on from the industry. We've really been enjoying these. 
uh, career spotlights. Uh, one piece of advice that you want to give folks here before we let you get on with your day. Um, if you have a passion for agriculture, a specific commodity, no matter where you are in life, join an association. You need to be part of the cattle feeders, cattle raisers, um, the cotton growers, um, the corn guys down the road, the farm bureau. I mean, there's the pork producers, I'm trying not to leave anybody out, but there's so many associations. Go where you feel, um, go where you're passionate about because you will learn so much from those leaders who have gone before you. I mean, they will um, teach you things uh, that you could never learn anywhere else. And, and it will benefit you for the rest of your life. So do that and an internship before you graduate, hopefully. Definitely. <laughs> and and on the internship front, I'm putting up a URL right now. Uh, go to aggrad.com or actually go to jobs.aggrad.com profile. Uh, we are going to use that profile as a way to get in touch with you about upcoming opportunities for and for entry level jobs. Uh, but then also be able to connect directly with employers that might be a fit for your background, your interests, uh, and what sub-segment of the industry you're into. Well, Carmen, thank you so very much for being on the show. I really appreciate this. If people want to reach back out to you, how can they do that? Um, my, uh, they can reach me at TCFA. It's just Carmen, C-A-R-M-E-N, at TCFA.org. And you guys also follow Texas Cattle Feeders on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Stand All right. Up. <laughs> I'm trying to do this on the fly here. I, I've got her email up on the screen as well as follow ECFA across platforms. Uh, thanks for those of you who joined. And uh, thank you very much, Carmen, for being on the show. Thank you. All right.